Hey everybody, welcome to a special edition of Double Coverage. I'm Ben Fredrickson alongside Mike Strange to ask the questions that you have uh, about Newman's basketball coach Donnie Tyndall. It's been a busy first week for him. He was hired on Tuesday and ever since then he's been trying to keep his incoming signing class on board while also kind of hit the ground running. I'm looking for some new players for a roster that currently has four open scholarships. Looks like it could have a few more by the time the season rolls around. So. We're going to get to your questions. A lot of those questions, uh, the first ones we got to address those um, initial signees who, who've asked for their letters of release. Um, some of the specific ones right off the bat were, uh, is he going to get a chance to meet with point guard Larry Austin? Um, answer to that is is no. Larry Austin been granted, has been granted his release, but there are a couple of signees who've requested their release who, uh, who Coach Tindall is going to get a chance to meet with. Yeah, Philip Gopher looks like the, uh, the one that uh, Coach Tindall has expressed a desire to meet with. Uh, Philip Kofer, a 6'8 forward from down in the Atlanta area. Of course, his uh, both parents went to Tennessee. Uh, Mike Kofer was a great football player here. And uh, he's asked for his release, but has not closed the door on Tennessee. And, and Coach Tindall is interested in talking to him, right? Correct, yeah. His dad told me yesterday that he is basically starting from square one. So he'll yeah. be able to be re-recruited um, from Tennessee, just like all the other schools can, re can recruit him. I'm also going to get a chance. He's, Coach Tindall's hoping to get a chance to get in front of C.J. Turman um, as well. And another try to get him to another big man around. out of the Atlanta area, Correct. somewhere in Georgia. Yeah. Some of the other questions that we got referred to the current players, uh, asked specifically if, if Robert Hubbs is going to transfer. Um, everything I've heard right now when I talked to Coach Tindall yesterday is that there have not been any current players that I've asked to, to go to other schools. But he did mention that that could, that could change in about 30 seconds. What do, you, what do you think about that, Mike? Well, yeah, I, I think it's not surprising that nobody has asked yet. But you've got to wait till the semester's over over until they get through finals and then it's uh, I think it still bears watching one of the uh, one of the questions I'm looking forward to how they're going to fill the holes in this roster was uh, asking about the uh, the Southern Miss signees obviously um, when when coach Tindall took over here the guys coach Martin had signed mm -hmm. we kind of saw them jumping ship but people were naturally wondering if some of the Southern Miss signees in that six-man class that coach Tindall signed they are going to do the same um, you got a chance to talk to him yesterday I think we probably got the same answer from when we asked what kind of what was his response to if he's going to try to bring some of those guys to Tennessee well as he said Tuesday at the press conference he will encourage them to stay with their commitment to Southern Miss. But there's what, five or six? Six. I will, uh, I will bet you a big McCroskey burger at Manuel's <laughs> Tavern in Atlanta at the SEC tournament. Okay that there's not at least one of those Southern Miss guys playing for Tennessee next year. I think there are a couple on that a couple on that list of signees that he would love to have. And, now, and, and I, I, don't, I believe him that he's not actively yeah. that he's actively going after him. But yeah. and, as and, we've seen, guys sign with coaches, not schools. Yeah, and, and I should qualify that I have no inside knowledge of anybody <laughs> coming to Tennessee. I'm just betting and one, at least one out of the six will. You do have inside knowledge of the burger, though. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, good, it's a right? good burger. Yeah. Okay. Come to think of it, I'm not even sure the SEC tournament's in Atlanta next year. I don't. I don't know. That. We'll, we'll get there somewhere. We'll get a burger somewhere. Okay. <laughs> I guess you know, kind of a broader question that we came across is, you know, looking at this at this roster, four open spots. How is he going to fill that for next season? Only he four? says right now. <laughs> could, could be could be more very very quickly. How is he going to fill that? I mean, what what do you think his approach is going to be? I know that in talking to him, he's going to go after pretty much anybody they can get. They're going to look at high school guys, junior college guys. Uh, any transfers, grad transfers, anything they can, right. any, a, anything is open. That's the pool right there, basically. Uh, high school, who's left out there? Not much, probably. Uh, maybe some guys that were still about their grades, you know, hadn't gotten the grades, so there was some question why they haven't signed yet. There's the JUCO guys. Again, I don't know how many are still out there, but there's probably some guys that had good JUCO seasons that did not sign in November. And then there's the uh, the senior transfers, the like Antonio Barton came to Tennessee last year. Um, a couple of the the questions that we had, a few were asking yeah. for some specific names to watch. And you, I know you that uh, I know that everyone's always interested in names to watch. The one that I can give you is uh, actually a guy who played two years of uh, junior college basketball in my hometown, uh, Kevin Punter. He's a six four shooting guard. You know him? Uh, I don't know him, but my dad has seen him play. I talked to my dad last night, so <laughs> he's a six four it. six four shooting report. guard. Uh, he can fill it up. Uh, he's a good player, and he is actually committed uh, to Missouri. Is at State Fair Community College right now in Sedalia. Um, but he's a guy who uh, actually reopened his commitment um, after Frank Haith, the Missouri coach, left to go to Tulsa, and he never signed any scholarship papers, so he could he could play uh, he could play here right away if he if he ends up coming. I think he actually wants to visit this weekend. This weekend, yeah. Well, I'm going to throw a name out there. This is a little more of a long shot, but Ian Childs was a senior guard, or not a senior guard, I guess a junior guard last year at IUPUI, uh, won the Summit League. 
He's from Louisville, Kentucky, and he's one of those senior transfers with immediate eligibility. And uh, I saw a tweet that uh, Maryland, he's interested in Maryland and, and a couple of other schools, but Tennessee was one of those other schools. I think he averaged 15 points a game last year on a, on a good little men major team. So those are two names to track uh, right away. Another one to keep a, keep an eye on is, is one that played for this team last year. Uh, Coach Tyndall said yesterday that he's been in discussions with Quentin Chivas about potentially returning. Uh, UT had previously announced that Chivas would transfer after after graduating this summer. Mm -hmm. but he might be looking at the roster and saying, I might be able to play a little bit next year, so maybe, I, yeah. maybe it's not, not worth trying it out in a new school. So those yeah. are three names to keep in mind that could help kind of uh, – Patch up that roster for uh, for what could be um, what could be kind of a, a rough first season if they don't yeah. if they are unable to bring in some talent. So, Ben, you uh, you mentioned the the senior transfer with immediate eligibility, and you were uh, had a big thick list you printed out. Uh, right I mean, there's pages of them. <laughs> there's a lot of them. Ten pages as of right now, and these are updated. Some of these guys have found out which school they're going to, but uh -huh. it just kind of shows you the transfer the transfer wave in college basketball, and that will yep. certainly be one that. Uh, Coach Tindall and his staff are looking at yeah. writing uh, here in the late period. A May sign spring signing period ends May 21st, so they'll have to have the roster locked up by then. I, I don't think that they feel they have to fill up all the scholarship spots, no. but they're definitely not going to want to enter yeah. the season with, they're gonna with fill five some or more. Up. So they're going to they're going to be looking to add. Um, that'll do it for us. If you have additional questions, ones we couldn't get to, please get a hold of us on Twitter or uh, through our Govals Extra emails. You can find them there, and uh, we'll uh, continue to keep you updated on uh, Coach Tindall's first season with the Vols.